Okay, welcome everyone. I see a few more people joining us. I think we'll go ahead and get started. I do want to encourage everyone to take the survey. You can get to that survey by taking a picture of this QR code, or there'll be a link at the top of the chat feature. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Chrissy Backman and I'm the Energy Field Coordinator for Cool Davis. We have a great crowd, crowd and a great presentation tonight, so let's get started. Here's an outline. First, I will go over the role that battery technology and specifically residential battery technology plays in our community. Our second feature is gonna be a deeper dive into battery technology by Mohamed Bazchaloui, who works for Enphase Energy, one of the leaders in residential battery technologies. Next, we will view three homeowner videos. Three households shared their video tours of their systems and gave us insight into having the systems installed. Then finally, the last 20 minutes of our presentation will be at the Q&A session where, we'll have the where you will have the opportunity to ask Mohammed, the homeowners, or our industry experts, um, which include our local solar contractors, any questions that you might have. So here's the ground rules. Please use the chat if the sound is not working or the presentation is not sharing right. One of our Cool Davis staff will help you out. Today, we're joined by Leslie Crenna, Chris Granger, and Aaron Reddy. And again, I'm Chrissy Backman, and I'll be your host for this evening. For all of your pending questions about batteries, please input them into the Q&A button below. You can put them in at any time. Please indicate if the question is directed to a specific panelist. You can see all the questions the other participants have already asked, and we're using a beta feature to try upvoting. So if you see a, a question that you also want to answer, go ahead and try the upvote feature, and that will make sure that um, the questions that have the most interest will answer first. Uh, we hope to get to all of your questions, but if you miss anything, this webinar is being recorded, and I'll be following up with an email to all attendees with a link to this presentation. We will also post on our YouTube channel, Live Cool Davis. So make sure you check it out, hit that like button and subscribe. Now I know you have intriguing viewing competition tonight. We know there's little other things people are trying to watch, but we are very happy that you've decided to join us tonight. Trust me, our evening will be much more civil and informative. So please stay tuned. So who is Cool Davis? We are an active network of residents, community organizations, businesses, and community institutions. We are committed to implementing the City of Davis's Climate Action and Adaptation Plan. We partnered with the city in 2010, and we just recently celebrated our 10th anniversary. Our original joint goal was carbon neutrality by 2050 for the city, but we have then updated it, so now our carbon neutrality goal is 2040. In more general terms, we're here to help our community adapt to a changing climate and to improve the quality of life for all. One of our campaign goals, mutually set with the city back in 2016, was to try to double the number of residential rooftop solar systems in Davis by the end of 2020. That's this year. Cool Davis has been focused on promoting education about solar to our community, and our latest numbers show that we have 3,980 systems as of April, so we're 88% of the way. So we are still actively encouraging people. Now is the time to get solar. And if you, um, if you have not already. So how do we do that? How are we encouraging people? Well, we wanna make it fun. We love all things solar. We provide outreach to our community to provide education, planning guides, and to be a trusted third party. We used to do most of our outreach in person, doing solar home tours, visiting the farmer's market or other community events but 2020 has motivated us to pivot to provide more content online. So here we are virtually. We have an educational role in our cutting edge community. It's our responsibility to help answer questions about emerging tech and to help people in the decision-making process without the pressure of sales. We walk the walk and we talk the talk and we share our experiences. Please see our solar resources page at cooldavis.org solar to see our solar FAQs, solar stories and our solar planning guides and share them with your friends and neighbors that are still maybe on the fence. Making decisions like solar and home energy efficiency upgrades may not be the coolest or sexiest life decision, but we wanna change that perception. It's valued, it's important, and it's a great return on investment. Recognizing our neighbors who've taken these actions and making visible their decision to go solar with buttons like you see on the screen above or putting up a yard sign and featuring them on our social media is the best way to influence more people to go solar. 
we want our community to go solar to keep us with keep us with our renewable energy goal, but even more, it's fostering a sustainable and resilient community. Today, keeping the lights on at home takes new importance because we work, school, and entertain almost exclusively from our homes. So how do batteries make our community sustainable and resilient? Well, when our community loses power, we're vulnerable. Power outages due to storms or other grid outages are disturbances that our community can better manage if there's backup power. Many people don't realize that solar is not going to provide your home power in the outage unless you have a battery. And while historically our community has had occasional outages, public safety power shutoffs and fires have left some of without power for days. This is unfortunately happening more frequently, and so many in our community are looking to have these backup power options. Last year, Cool Davis noticed an increase in advertisements for gas generators, and I'm sure you've seen them too. They're integrated, slick systems marketed as the easiest, cheapest, and best way to prepare for these outages. And we brought this observation to our solar task force. Our Cool Davis Solar Task Force is a diverse group that keeps a finger on the pulse of solar in our community. We're made of representatives from the city of Davis, Valley Clean Energy, which is our local electricity provider, local solar contractors, and the Cool Davis staff. This group with the Cool Davis Network makes up what I like to call the boots on the ground. And we decided that it was our role to make our community aware that batteries are also an option for power outage, as well as having some really cool added benefits. Batteries help with renewable energy management. Batteries allow for us to store the energy made from solar panels and other renewable sources and use that power when we need it. It's better and more sustainable backup option when compared to gas generators. Over the last few months, Cool Davis has had, has had many inquiries about batteries, um, about battery backups, and our local contractors at our solar task force have seen battery inqu inquiries skyrocket due to this resiliency concern. We don't wanna see a short-sighted solution where most people default to gas powered generators. They pollute and only add to our poor air quality situation. But at, batteries also have the added benefit of saving you money. Not only will batteries provide backup power during an outage, but we'll also be able to lower your bills on the daily. So let's see how they can help us reach our carbon neutrality goal and save you money. Battery storage are key to managing our um, renewable energy and to lower our greenhouse gas emissions by supporting renewable energy production. During this day, solar is providing a significant portion of our energy profile in this state. But when the sun starts to set in the summer and the solar production starts to wane starting about 4 p.m., this coincides with an increase in demand. Everyone's getting home, AC is cranking, dinner is prepping, and solar can't keep up. This time of day forces the utility companies to rely on non-renewable energy sources. Because of the increased cost to operate during this time, the utilities have been passing on this cost to our consumers. That's us. Uh, they've been doing that through time of use rates, which are when the utility charges customers more due in part to having to use non-renewable energy sources. The goal of TOU rates is to incentivize customers to consume energy during times when the cost of generating electricity is cheap and to disincentivize energy consumption when the cost of generation is high. Sometimes the grid even has trouble generating enough during the peak times, as we saw with our flex alerts and rot rotating blackouts that we felt in this region just recently. The price of electricity can be 20 to 60% more expensive during the peak time. And the easiest way to save money is to avoid energy during that time. So how do we suggest doing that? Well, there's three ways. We can avoid um, peak energy use um, by flattening the energy curve. We're all familiar with this concept when it comes to COVID-19 cases as been seen on the image on the left. The goal is to spread out the caseload so the cases can be managed by the healthcare system. Similarly, we need to flatten the energy curve as seen on the image on the right, as to not overwhelm the renewable energy capacity of the grid altogether. There's three ways to flatten the energy curve, and the first is load shifting. Load shifting is when you use energy to do at a different part of the day. See how the image on the right gets flatter, but also fatter? It means that your, your change in energy usage is just spread out. This has the dual benefit of not exceeding the renewable energy capacity, as well as saving you from peak energy pricing. This works well for some activities, um, like using the dishwasher or doing a load of laundry. You can just do it in the morning, right? 
Um, the second method is to flatten the curve is to conservation, using less in general. We heard a lot about setting our AC thermostats to no lower than 78 during those flex alerts that we just had and making some sacrifices to use less as conservation. It works well with things like maybe line drying your laundry instead of using the dryer or opening your windows at night when the Delta breeze is good and the air quality is not terrible um, to avoid AC usage, usage at night. The third way that we can um, flatten the energy curve is peak shaving. And that's when batteries come into play. Peak shaving is lowering your peak demand by using an energy storage device, a battery, to power your home during peak times. You can continue using electricity, or at least some energy, while not relying on the grid at all. Batteries used in a, this peak shaving scenario will allow you to continue use electricity during the peak times, but rather than drawing from the grid, you're drawing from your battery. This GIF and the link to the article is um, from a recent Cool Davis article we just published about residential batteries. Um, and I heard today that it got published in the Vanguard, so you can go read more details um, uh, and all the suggestions we give there. One major consideration for batteries is will, uh, will be designed to serve either your whole house or just part of your house. Partial home backup systems, sometimes called critical loads, can serve lower amperage circuits of your choosing. A benefit is that by limiting the circuits, your battery won't be drained too fast and you don't have to worry about judicious usage during an outage. Whole home systems still require the homeowner to participate some. So for example, if the power goes out and you're welding or you're using your electric kiln or other big amperage circuits, your battery is gonna be drained super quickly. So in that case, a homeowner with a whole home system will need to go around and shut off big appliances to maximize the battery's usefulness. Also, batteries are still expensive. It may be more cost effective to have one battery that can serve, say, like um, your fridge, your lights, and your plug-in appliances, rather than requiring multiple batteries to serve your entire house. Whether you have a whole or a partial home system, battery systems can be programmed to discharge them when you need. They often have clever apps that allow you to visualize your energy usage, potentially making it a game. You can, func you can function your battery one way for daily peak shaving, and then you can have another program to optimize longevity in case of a multiple day outage. Electricity providers are actively working on how to communicate with customers during flex alerts. And as the grid gets smar smarter and flatten the curve becomes even more important, we anticipate an increase in the gamification of energy use. Uh, your kids are going to love it. Apps that are gonna make you conserve, load shift, and to peak shave. But the most monetarily valuable benefit of batteries is that I'll keep you off peak pricing and save you on your utility bills every single day, if you have time or use rates. Um, in this animation, the battery gets charged during the day when the solar is generating excess and starts to discharge from four to 9 p.m. The length of time your battery will last depends on your home and your system size, but you'll hear testimonies from our homeowners who, can, who say that they can stay completely out of the peak zone with the batteries they have installed. So the benefits of battery systems are multifaceted, making our community more resilient to power outages, reducing the stress on the electric grid, managing the renewable energy portfolio, and maybe most importantly, saving homeowners money by keeping them off peak. We'll hear more firsthand experiences from our homeowners later in the program, how they crunch their numbers for batteries to make financial sense, as well as give them the peace of mind that they desire. But let's first take a deeper dive into the te technology. Today, we're joined by a representative from Enphase Energy. We're happy to welcome Mohamed Bozchaloui as our special guest. Mo Mohamed is the Director of Products at Enphase Energy and leads definition, development, and market introduction of in-charge storage and in-power smart switch product lines. Prior to Enphase, Mohammed was the Tesla Energy was with Tesla Energy working on solar and storage for utility scale islands, commercial and industrial, and microgrids with sizes ranging from a few kilowatts to 100 megawatts. Please welcome Mohammed, and I'll pass over control. Stop sharing my screen so you can share your presentation. Just a reminder for the audience: please use the Q and A feature if you have any questions for Mohammed. Mohammed, our homeowners and our subject experts will be able to answer questions at the end of the presentation. Let me stop sharing mine. All right. Thank you so much. Let me see if I can 
share this, start sharing, go to presentation mode. Could you please confirm that you see my Yes, I see it. And mm -hmm. my video as well. Did I turn it on? Yes, your video is on. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chrissy. And it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to be speaking with uh, with the community of you know Cool Davis. This is this is a great honor. I was asked to talk a little bit about you know what overall battery storage technology is, how it's helping with different needs of the customer, customer resiliency, and uh, share some of my basically work that I've done at Enphase and the options that we are providing as a uh, US-based battery storage provider to our community here in, in Bay Area. A little bit about Enphase Energy. Uh, the Enphase Energy is a Bay Area, California-based company. It was founded in 2006 and right here in, in Petaluma. A couple of years ago, we moved the headquarters from Petaluma to, California, to Fremont, California. And we are the largest microinverter company in the world. And we have built more than 28, 29 million microinverters, basically uh, that are paired with every solar panel all over uh, the world. We have been present in more than 130 countries and we have more than 1.2 million systems all across the globe. The, the company has started working on battery storage in 2013, 14, and we start with our battery storage that was a small box of uh, 1.2 kilowatt hour. That was one of the first battery storage that basically came to market with AC coupling capability. We start working on the next generation and we recently announced our new battery storage product here in the US with the most demanded capability, which is really providing the backup capability. The premises of the new battery storage system, I'm not calling it just a battery, I'm calling it a system because it really has different components that are needed to be installed to really make it work and provide backup capability is that it needs to be able to provide a home that is always on. That basically means if there is a utility outage, PSPS events, or, or even if you know the homeowner just wants to go off grid, they have an option in their house, in the system that is producing energy on their premises and storing it and using it and managing it all as a single system. So what we have recently seen, PSPS events and, and other, other events that has caused a lot of utility power shutdown has brought this uh, understanding to a lot of our solar customers that if you have a solar and you don't have a battery storage currently today in your, in your installation, you don't get any power during the grid outage. The solar traditionally in the past you know, 10, 20, 15, 30 years, uh, they always relied on the grid to be able to operate. If you have solar that is paired with battery storage system, if the battery storage system does not have the capability, it doesn't necessarily mean that can provide power. But there are offer, there are alternatives today in the market that provide that uh, backup capability and providing the energy that you need as a homeowner during grid outages. So the entire experience of having a system that is providing backup is designed as a, as a single system is, is what we have been working on. But really when you're looking at a system that you wanna add as a homeowner to your system, I want to highlight the items that you know, we thought are important and we designed our battery storage system around that. And those are basically the factors that any battery storage technology in the market should provide to, to a homeowner. I go by one by one. Really, when you're designing a battery storage system, there are a few high level uh, items and I will talk extensively on it on this item this slide that are, are, are important. First of all is reliability. Reliability in the sense that 
the reason number one that uh, you want to have a battery storage is really having a power source when the grid is not reliable, when there is no grid or the grid is shut down. And that reliability should enable a homeowner to have power when they need. That seems obvious, but really when you're looking at uh, the options that are out there, not necessarily every single battery storage solution is providing that uh, capability. First of all, the architecture, the way that the battery itself is designed, the batteries, the battery cell, the inverter that is converting the energy from the battery to the AC, which is used by your appliances, the battery management unit and the battery controller that is designed, all of them needs to be properly designed to provide the maximum reliability. In addition to that, is like, regardless of how reliable you design a product, there is a chance of failure. And what is the impact of that particular failure that might happen is very important too. If there is a, a product in the market that by failure of a single component, the entire system, which is your solar on the roof, your battery storage, your monitoring, and your backup system shuts down, that's not a reliable system. Really, it, it's important to have some level of resiliency in the solution that you are installing to provide backup by itself as well. So what we have done at Enphase is really we are a modular design and a distributed architecture of our solution such that even if one component fails, even if one battery fails, even if one microinverter fails, still the remaining of the system is able to provide uh, the backup power that is needed. And I will, I will expand on that as well. The reliability of the battery storage itself, there are a lot of smaller companies around and even larger companies that basically provide a battery storage solution by, by picking and choosing different components from, from different vendors and and offering that as a storage solution. Really, that, that solution, even though it might work, it's not necessarily a solution that will last for many years to come. The warranty that the battery storage solution provider is offering to a homeowner is, is basically an indicator of how confident the battery vendor or the solution provider is. The bare minimum of, you know, 10 years warranty for battery storage is, is, is the standard that the entire industry is converging to. We have 10 years warranty for our battery storage and we have 25 year warranty for our PV microinverter, which are on the roof as, as a company. And the number of the systems that you know, have been installed and working all around the world is an indication of how reliable a system is and is accepted by the homeowners and customers all around the world. As, as I mentioned, we have more than 1.2 million installation all around the world. And, and I've been working for you know, 15 years, 14 years so far, longest one. And, and the most recent generation of us is the most reliable with the lowest failure rate of the in microinverter in the, in the world. That's one item. And, and, and reliability is, is important because it's, Battery storage is not a solution that you're buying today and you want to buy another one tomorrow and just swap it. It's not your iPhone or it's not your phone. It's, it's an investment. It's, it costs money and you want basically to have something that lasts for years to come. And by choosing the right battery storage solution in the market, you can make sure that you have made the right investment decision. The other Super important item here is really the safety. Safety of the battery storage system, as you know, a lot of homeowners are concerned with the safety of their home, with, with, with the news that you know people have seen in the past, uh, in terms of you know what's gonna happen. I have a battery at home. Is it safe? Is it not safe? And that's really one of the critical items that I've heard a lot from homeowners. With that, uh, what we decided to use for our battery storage is one of the safest battery storage chemistries, lithium iron phosphate, or what we call LFP batteries, that is recognized by Department of Energy as, as one of the safest residential battery chemistries in the, in the market to be the basis of our battery storage. Overall, 
there are lead acid, old school battery, which has its own problem of lead. So basically nobody is really using them anymore uh, and being replaced by lithium iron phosphate or lithium ion uh, battery chemistries offered by other vendors. And then the more common one that I mentioned, LFP or another chemistry that uh, we call it NMC or nickel magnesium cobalt is the other competing battery chemistry that is very popular in the in the world and other vendors have been providing. But reality is that the lithium iron phosphate or the bat or LFP that we have been providing has way better thermal stability and uh, is in the case of basically being exposed to even fire or actual intentional uh, basically punching of the battery, it doesn't explode or it doesn't basically catch on fire or causes fire on the other units. For that, the, the level of the safety that uh, the battery solution provider is offering with their certificates, UL underwriting labs uh, listings of the solution is, is a good indication of what's the level of confidence of the solution provider, the battery provider in the product. There are a bunch of like list, long list of UL certificates that the battery storage need to have, but I wanna highlight one that is going above and beyond of what is really required in the market. And that is UL 9540A that is not necessarily required by the uh, AHJs or by, by authorities to be uh, used for batteries, but we have gone above and beyond what is required and have done this testing. And the result that is tested by independent UL lab is that basically even if they put the battery on fire and they created a, a simulated thermal runaway uh, on the battery, there was no external framing, the fire didn't you know, go to the other units, there was no detectable gas or frying debris or so on. So that's that's very, very important when you're looking at, at the battery to see what is the battery chemistry, what level of safety requirements they have, safety, safety certificates they have. And, and asking about that, I think it's, it's a wise uh, decision when you talk to anyone uh, in, in the market that is providing that solution. Another important factor is really, uh, what is the material? A lot of people, you know, they, for good reason or bad reason, or for maybe right or wrong, they, they just don't want to have a toxic material like cobalt in the battery in their home. There is a lot of you know, containment in place for every battery that is in the market. However, again, that's, that's one, con one concern that, you know, someone says, no, I just want to make sure that the same way that I don't want to have lead in my home, I don't want to have cobalt in my home. We have a battery chemistry that is cobalt free or has cobalt. And, 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 and that's another good question for, for homeowners to basically acquire, ask uh, when you're looking at different options out there. So those are important ones. Another uh, important item in terms of safety is that how the battery is different than your uh, normal appliances that you have at home, like your, your fridge, your TV, and all that are using AC, you just plug it to the plug and it's working. Do you have a DC voltage in the system or not? And how high is the DC voltage? It's, it's important because uh, really as an electrical engineer that uh, I, I, I know that really protecting against a fault or spark that would be caused by DC, high DC voltage is, is much harder than really AC. And that's why a lot of basically, not a lot of, almost all the appliances that you see are using AC. It's, it's easier to transport, easier to protect. And asking about, do you have high voltage DC in your system? Uh, or are you basically operating within you know, same voltage range of AC that uh, my other appliances, which is, you know, used by NEC code uh, and is the most popular source of volt or most popular way of transporting or using electricity is, is it different or not? And that's, that's one important aspect that I think our solution, again, is designed with not having any high voltage DC in that. Again, that's, these are the important ones. And the reason I'm referring to our solution because we talked, we did a lot of research 
we highlighted the important one and designed the system from day one to, to be like this. And I, I think there is a lot of opportunity for, for, for homeowners and, and customers to go and basically do research on this area and see the level of comfort that they have with any of these items. The other item which I basically have here is the performance of the system. By performance of the system, I mean, how, uh, what is the capability of that? If you are adding a battery storage, what can it basically support for you? What can it, you know, uh, back up? And is it just a light? Is it just a fridge? Is it like your coffee maker? Or can you basically add more to it if you want to add your garage, if you want to add your AC, if you want to add your oven, and or if you want to add your well pump to it? Is it basically the system that is able to provide all of this uh, or support all of these uh, appliances or devices that you have at home, or is something that you have to go with whatever the capability of that, that particular battery storage is. And overall, uh, one size doesn't fit all. My needs for my home is different than your needs for your home. I need to basically have special maybe just a sub panel with a few of them. I need to have you know, a fridge and, and a bunch of appliances. And you might have a house that absolutely need to have the well pump backed up. And I don't have a well pump in my home. And for that, can I, can I use the battery storage to stack it? Can I expand it? Can I basically uh, tailor it based on my own need? That's, that's important. That's one item. The second is, how much control and visibility do I have over my, my system? There is a battery storage sitting there and it's supposed to operate when you need it. Is it going to basically operate? Do you have any control and visibility on that? How much of, uh, how much the manufacturer of the battery storage allowing you to, you to use their, their control system to let's say use their app and, and so on to, to you know, monitor every single battery storage or transfer your system from on-grid to off-grid. Those are the items that actually are, are, are super important. And does it have any automatic feature of, you know what, oh, there's a storm coming, there's a you know, PSPS event is coming in and so on. Can, I, can the battery is intelligent enough to basically get ready for that and, and I, I, or do I need to go do that manually? As, as Chrissy mentioned, like there are different uses, like is the battery is smart enough to basically use time of use rates and optimize my operation even uh, if I say I need this amount of battery storage to be reserved all the time for backup purposes. So those are like good questions to ask and, 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 and compare uh, when you are looking in the market and, and, and trying to decide what battery storage to basically install. I want to basically talk about you know a customer experience that's like as a homeowner as a customer it, it matters a lot to me when i basically buy something then i invest something for for next you know 10 years i expect to basically have a very high and superb customer experience if i need someone to be answering my question when i pick the call i don't need to you know wait in line for hours to, to speak to some person. That's one level of that. The second is, you know what, if, if something fails, how fast we can basically get a hold of a device that can be installed and replaced and RMA. Who's providing the warranty for that? Is it the warranty of the entire thing from one company or do I need to go and talk to multiple companies to figure out, oh, Who's, who's offering it. Imagine the battery storage solution has multiple components from the battery, the switch and the solar and all that. And if you are going to basically figure out which part is faulty and which person or which company you wanna go talk to, that's gonna be very, very frustrating experience. Having all of that provided with a single company, it definitely reduces all of, all of the headache of dealing with warranty and service. And it, the, 
last item, which is the technical performance, is like, okay, I have a backup. It matters a lot for a lot of people and it doesn't matter for, for some. It's like, when I have a utility grid outage, do I have an outage in my system or the transition between the uh, between on-grid to off-grid to my system is seamless? By seamless, I mean, do I see a flicker? Do I reset? Do I, do I see my internet router is reset? Do I see my clock on my oven or microwave is reset? Or no, it's like fully seamless and you don't even notice that's happened. So that's another important one that it matters for a lot of home owners that I don't even want to have that inconvenience of going and resetting my clock, my microwave clock, or my internet router that every time that you know there's a utility outage, I, I have to wait you know, for a few minutes to come back online. That seamless transition is 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 a again, is not an essential for a lot of people, but it's absolutely needed as a world class customer experience for, for a lot of homeowners. And the last one, as I mentioned, is buying a battery storage and PV is a really long term investment. In long term investment, you know, it's, it's 10 years or beyond for your PV, you know, up to 25 years. Who are you working with? And is it company that you are going to your battery storage, you know, committed to work in this area and provide improve, improve improved performance over the years? Can they even upgrade their performance using internet over the air at all or not? Can they introduce new features? Are the new features that are being introduced going to enhance the overall experience of the homeowner or a feature is introduced by one vendor for some part of the system and a feature by another vendor for other part of the system that they don't necessarily work together. So those are the basically trade-offs and the question that a homeowner needs to ask when, when really buying a, a solution, a battery storage system for, for many, many years. So integrating all of these components together and making it work is something that is not as trivial if you have a solution that is not all provided by the same company. And that was another you know, very important deciding factor for us to make sure the entire ecosystem of battery storage and home energy management, the way we call it, is provided by us, designing it, manufacturing it, servicing it, doing a comprehensive test of every single you know, device and functionality on a full system and by adding features to, to it. And the capability of you know, integrating new resources. That's great. Today we have solar, today we have you know, battery storage, tomorrow will be another battery storage that is coming with the, you know, different maybe battery chemistry, solid state, or new technology that you want to add for whatever reason, let's say fuel cells become popular, or any other, you know, technology that might, might become popular. Can you even integrate those to your home, or are you going to have a system that stuck in 2020, and it cannot be upgraded technology that might come in 2025 or 2020, you know, three, seven, whatever that, that timeline is. That, that's important one. And, and the way that is decided by, by, by a company that actually if they can offer that is really the, the architecture of the solution. Are they going to you know, support that from architecture design perspective at all or not? That's, that's the, the decision to be basically. With that, I, I basically want to quickly go through what we have here as our ensemble energy management technology. What we call it uh, is really technology that enables full control of your entire energy, energy system at home at your choice and provides an always on experience. When there is a grid down at our outage, you basically have your own power and then there is Grid still, you, you can save money by, by uh, optimizing the operation of the battery storage. What you see here in this image is from left to right is the Empower smart switch, which is acting as a device that can connect or disconnect your home from the utility grid. That is very important because you cannot really operate your own grid and be connected to the utility grid if there is a grid outage. 
And that's really because of the safety. The utility thinks that the power lines that they have is, is not energized. And if you have uh, an energized system by the battery in your home, there is a chance that basically you will, you will transfer the power to the utility and, and that causes safety. So there has to be a device that disconnects your home from the grid so that your home can form its own small microgrid and provide power and backup power to, to your appliances. In the middle, what we have is NCharge 10, which is our battery storage system. It's a 10 kilowatt hour battery storage system. And on the right of that, is a smaller version of the battery, which is in charge three, is one third of the capacity of in charge 10 with 3.36 kilowatt hour battery capacity. On the far right is our IQ combiner, which basically is acting as our gateway, communication gateway to communicate all of the information to the cloud and enable monitoring and control. Plus combining all the PV system that is on the roof into one circuit and connecting it to, to your home. The way it looks on a home is that on the roof, basically you have the PVs and IQ microinverters or M-series microinverters that we have. They basically come, are connected to your AC system. In charge battery storage in the garage or outside, whatever is the best location based on your specific site. And then outside uh, is the Empower Smart Switch and IQ combiner box. So those are those are the items that basically is, is going to be installed on your home. If you have two in charge, basically you add another one here, three or four, depending on your site and depending on your needs. And all of this system are uh, monitored using our Enlightened mobile app and your Android or iOS device and shows all the information of every single panel on the roof every single battery in your home, every single inverter inside the battery. So you will have full visibility of what's happening in, 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 uh, in your system. And you have full control on that. You, you wanna go off grid or you wanna be stay on grid, you can just easily toggle that in your the app and say, okay, I wanna go off grid. Or in a couple months say, Amazon, take me off grid. And basically you will be going off grid be just as easy as asking your Alexa, Madam Amazon actually, Alexa, take me off grid. And, 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 and so on. The other one, the feature that is enabled here is what we call the storm guard that is really preparing your system for a potential shutdown of the utility within the next you know, 24 to 48 hours. All the power is, is, is in the palm of your hand and you can have full control over your, your system. It matters a lot to me as, as a user to have that visibility and control. And I think that's a, a absolute right of a homeowner when they have spent so much money on the system to be able to, to uh, get, that, get that control. What's inside in charge battery you see here is a 3.2 kilowatt, 3.4 kilowatt hour. This is one of the small ones that I, you see here and the 10.1 kilowatt hour. Each of them, they have you know, microinverters. So under the hood, my apologies, under the hood, basically it looks like this. So this is an in-charge tank with the cover off. So you have three base units and each of them have their own four microinverters. So under one of those in-charge tank covers, you have 12 microinverters and three individual battery storage systems. So that means that if one of these battery storage system fails, you still have the two other base units, which are independent, providing backup power. If one of these inverters inside the battery fails, you still have 11 other ones that are basically providing that power capability. Imagine to really get to zero power, you need to have either all the 12 microinverters fail or all the three base units fail. So that's, that's what I'm talking about, the reliability. And that's where I'm talking about, you know, having a solution that by design is, is more reliable compared to one big piece of battery with one big piece of inverter that if the inverter fails, the entire battery fails, an entire solar system fails, and then you don't have any backup, backup capability in your home. The batteries, 
are AC coupled and they don't have any high voltage DC. All of the voltage, DC voltage we have is less than 80 volt DC, which is, you know, is the voltage that actually right now is considered as, as, as safe or even rapid shutdown of the PV system. The supports backup is LFP chemistry. I talked about, about the chemistry is the safer chemistry for residential. And it's so safe that really you don't need to have a fan or palm for actively cooling it. So it's, it's a passive cooling. It just has a natural convention uh, for cooling system and still operates properly indoor and outdoor. If you want to install inside the house or outside, it comes with 10 years of warranty or 4,000 cycle. And at the end of the 10 years or 4,000 cycle, full cycle, you will still have 70% of the uh, capacity available. Let's say if you buy one in charge 10, after 10 years, your system is warranted to have still 70% of that 7 kilowatt hour available to, to operate. And I, I talked about this modularity and expandability. You, if you want to add just one 10, 10 and three, two 10, three 10, or whatever that number is to meet the needs of your, your specific home and your specific requirement, I think that's, that's the feature. Empower Smart Switch, I, I quickly go through it. The main functionality of that is really just isolate from the grid or connect to the to grid. It can go up to 200 amps. So if you have 100 amp service, 150 amp service, or 200 amp service, you can use the same device for, for that. And it provides seamless transition to backup during grid outages. So that means that you might see a tiny flicker, but it's not going to be resetting your, your clocks or routers and so on. And, and that's really just, actually, I had a customer that basically they didn't notice that they were an off grid, they started running their appliances, the heavy appliances as well. And, uh, you know, they were running out. And, and so we have a feature now that basically sends an alert that says, you are in backup mode, just know that, you know, you, you don't you don't get to use your, you know, uh, oven or AC for, for many, many hours, you're gonna, you know, draw the, the energy. And it, this also comes with 10 year warranty. In terms of whole home backup, depending on how you want to basically set your system, the, the equipment that I showed in the previous one can be used to simply back up your entire system. From right to left, this is your utility, this is your meter, this is the power smart switch with some wiring inside it, just ignore it for now. And this is your entire panels. This is the, the load panel that you have in your home and Empower is sitting between the main panel and the utility grid. Then the battery storage, how many of the battery storage that you have, you basically connect them and bring them inside Empower Smart Switch. We have a feature to basically even connect the generators in this system. The, the firmware for that is uh, scheduled to be released later this year uh, or early next year. I think it's later this year. And with that, uh, all of these devices wired, then we have wireless communication between all of the components, between the end charge, combiner, smart, uh, and power smart switch. They talk over Wi Fi or cellular to the cloud, and you can monitor using your phone. What happens during a grid outage is that utility is dark, the empower smart switch disconnects the house from the grid, and now you are safe to operate. Uh, as your own small micro grid in your home and provide backup. And the, basically the part that is not grayed out is the part that you will have your entire backup system. This is a case that you want to have your AC, your oven, your, your entire house, house backed up. The other solution is that, no, you just want to put a small uh, selection of load that you have, just your kitchen or special kind of load that you might have, your internet router and so on. In this scenario, the utility comes, you know, this is the utility side coming from right to left. And the main panel goes, you know, is, is what you have, you keep it as is, but then you, uh, or the installer basically selects some of the circuits that the homeowner wants to back up to, to a small sub panel backup, which is under the Empower Smart Switch. Under the Empower Smart Switch, uh, you will have two, four, six, eight, or whatever the number of circuit that is, 
connected to, to backdrop. And how it works is utility goes off, you disconnect, you don't have backup for your main load, but still you will have backup for the part that you have connected. This is a sample uh, of a partial home backup, one in charge 10, Empower Smart Grid a combiner box that you know was installed in, in the Bay Area. And the other one is a whole home backup. You see the number of batteries is two in charge 10, two in charge three, and it's for the entire home and it backs up a large five ton AC as well. So that I, I think wraps up here my, my section. I, I conclude that if and open it up for QA, I believe I'm over my time. Thank you, Mohammed. That was very, very informative. Um, yeah, that is amazing. They were able to back up their AC with that system, with that battery system. Absolutely. Nice. With, with that eight and as large five ton AC, you can basically back up. This is in Florida, uh -huh. larger homes, and there it's hot. So they definitely want to have, want to have their AC system backed up. Nice. Okay, great. Well, we're going to, um, uh, okay. if anyone has questions for Mohammed, I would like you to uh, uh, encourage you to enter it into the Q&A session. Uh, um, I am, go we're going to go next to our um, um, homeowner show and tell. So uh, this is what Cool Davis loves to do. It's uh, in person and, but we have of course transitioned it to virtual. From a Cool Davis experience, one of the most powerful motivators is sharing stories. Neighbors talking about their experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And as part of the National Solar Week, we sought out stories from our community on their solar, electric vehicles, and their battery systems. And if you have time, please check out all our solar tours. Um, it's called Davis Driving on Sunshine. And you can see our stories um, at cooldavis.org backslash solar. We had help from Alex Silva from Davis Media Access, who helped film and edits um, most of our interviews. And today we've highlighted three of these stories that have battery systems installed in their homes. Let's take a few minutes to watch each of these videos. The homeowners have all been gracious enough to join us in the webinar today as panelists. And so you'll have the opportunity to ask them questions about their experience and their systems. So please use the Q&A feature to ask and to upvote questions. So let's get started. Okay, so first up is Bruss Rosler. He lives in Davis and recently got solar and a battery system. He's a retired Coast Guard pilot and sort of a current United 777 first officer, according to him. He says he has always cared about solar, but with the military lifestyle and moving every three years, he's never been settled enough to invest in solar. He's lived in Davis for five years now and has made many energy improvements on his home. Solar was the obvious next step and he stumbled upon the battery option. He says it's either good salesmanship or what he would rather believe an extensive cost benefit analysis that caused a, him to purchase the battery with his system. So let's listen to his story. Hello, my name is Brust Rother. I'm the proud owner of a 2018 uh, 6.1 kilowatt uh, solar array with a Tesla backup battery. All installed by Solar City, now Tesla uh, Electronics. Um, really happy with it. It's got the Solar Edge five kilowatt inverter, um, and then our battery. I guess what we want to talk to it today about is our battery. I uh, got talked into it a little bit originally, but uh, the longer we've had it, which is about two years now, the happier I am with it. It's a, uh, I think it's about fourteen kilowatt capacity. I don't know. It works. What's great about it is it's pretty seamless uh, integration into our solar system. And unless I want to nerd out on it, I don't ever have to think about it. What we use it for primarily is a time of use uh, energy um, backup, I guess I would say. So as you may know that PG&E charges uh, energy by time of use. There's peak, off peak and semi peak, I guess. Well. Off peak is about 22 cents per hour and peak is about 42 cents per hour. And we use this battery primarily to uh, power the home during our during the peak uh, 
during the peak electricity cost window. And I think that's from about four to eight in the evening every day. Um, and that works. Uh, we've, I've calculated uh, the difference between paying those prices and using the battery. Uh, we'll pay this battery off in about uh, five and a half years. Um, the battery was about a $7,000 cost installed additional, additional to our solar system. Um, but with the unfortunately defunct 30% Federal rebate is about $5,000. So I ran my calculations off of that. Again, right about five and a half year payback um, for that. Our solar system, again, is a 6.1 kilowatt uh, system up on the roof, as they are. Um, and I think we'll have about a 14 year payback on that, just cost wise. Why did I get it? I got it because I think it's neat technology. Um, not only, you know, as an engineer, I have, uh, I'll do the money calculations, but I know that it's better for the world um and a lot of the summertime we can actually be uh off grid the entire summer from about april to october we're running net zero energy and we're actually shipping a lot of power back to the grid but what's great about our battery is here especially during that uh, window of time is it can power our house pretty much indefinitely with power outages um and judicious use of uh you know high draw equipment um so it acts sort of as a solar generator uh, and, a, and an off-grid system, really, if there is a power outage. We haven't had a lot of that. There have been a few small, short windows, but uh, it's nice to go to sleep at night knowing that you're not going to be without power. If I were to do it again, I'd certainly get another battery. I just wish we had more roof space because I would definitely put more solar on and I would consider even using two batteries. I, th I do believe in this. I think it's the wave of the future is to decentralize our power generation points and uh, so we don't have to worry so much about the uh, potential for power, long-term power outages or even rolling blackouts during uh, times of extreme heat or uh, any other times. Um, I'm happy to talk about it. I love the system. I'm enthusiastic about it, not just for uh, what it does from a mathematical perspective for my house, but I think we're just making one step or to make one step closer to uh, you know, a little bit more energy independence. Um, for ourselves and our country and our world. Uh, happy to talk about it with anyone if you have any questions. Have a great day. Awesome, thank you, Brust. Um, and our next homeowner uh, show and tell is Stephanie and Richard Hart. They're big fans of solar. They have an LG battery and they have three electric cars. They live in Elk Grove and have SMUD as their electricity provider. And I mentioned that because they do have a different peak time frame. And we've mentioned before. So let's listen to what they have to say. Uh, can you tell us about your solar system? Yeah, so we've had a solar system on our house for about two and a half years now. It's a five kilowatt system. Uh, they have the, um, the LG Neon 2 panels on top of the house. I believe there's 13 of them or 14 of them on top of the house. Um, and then we also have the uh, the nine kilowatt LG backup battery. And then we also have the solar edge inverter as well. And then we have um, our EV station that's kind of hooked into all of this as well. Um, yeah, so typically during the day, we don't use a lot of electricity and it fills up the battery. And then we can, the battery is then discharged during peak time. So we don't have to use peak at our house. Um, it's been really amazing. We average, around uh, 500 kilowatts a month, roughly. Um, more during the summer and less during the, um, during the winter. Actually, the discrepancy between summer and winter can be quite significant because of the way our panels are set up. Because we have panels that are actually um, east-west facing as opposed to on the southern par part of the house. So during the summertime, we actually get more than probably most other people get because we have uh, a lot of sun during the early part of the day and the late part of the day because it's east-west facing. However, during the winter time, because we have no south facing panels, our efficiency plummets quite a bit, um, but it averages out to around 500 kilowatts. Um, we went with the, our installation company was Future Energy Savers. And they're a really amazing company. We originally, when we went to get the solar, we sat down with four different companies 
um, getting quotes from them, getting, hey, how are we, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna install? What are your recommendations? What are you seeing? We asked us a ton of questions, took a ton of notes, and it kind of just compared those four companies to each other. And realistically, Future Energy Savers is one who ends up came out on top of us. Um, I I wanted the the best of the best. I wanted the the LG Neon Two panels, even though they were like several times more expensive. I wanted to be more more efficient than and otherwise, and which has been really nice. Even with all of the soot and uh, ash on top of them, they're actually still really efficient right now. Um, but Future Energy Savers, they were really amazing, putting everything together, getting all the permitting for us, getting everything installed. They get the entire system set up in a single day, which was really convenient and really nice. Um, the only hiccup we ran into was with one of the permits, but that wasn't on their end. They submitted the permit to the city and then the city lost track of it. And then they tried to resubmit it, submitted the wrong one. And there was a fiasco on the city end and we ended up having that, but they, they did most of the legwork with following up with the city and making sure that all got submitted. So I really appreciated the amazing job they did. Uh, and then we have the um, the app on the phone as well, so we can actually see what our what our production is at any given time, and what our battery level is currently at, and how much we're currently using right now. It's so like right now we're currently drawing 9.7 kilowatts, and that's partially because I have all three of my cars plugged in right now, uh, so they're drawing quite a bit, and they've pretty much drained my battery today. <laughs> Um, but we won't have the cars plugged in tomorrow because they're gonna be full today, so they'll be able to um, it'll recharge the battery and then we'll be able to discharge that during peak. But I really like having the app and see what the energy usage is. And um, I'm a little bit of a, of a nerd when it comes to efficiency, both with my electric vehicles and my solar. So when we first got this installed and I could see the app, I turned everything off in my house, brought up the app, and I would turn something on in the house to see what it did, and then turn it off and turn something else in my house to see what it did. And I actually tracked what kilowatt usage everything in the entire house was using. So then I knew during peak times, during other times, like, hey, I can use this while charging the car, do this, or I know what time of the day. So I would always have that battery during peaks. I don't think we've drawn from peak, and I don't even know the last time we drew between 5 and 8 p.m. because We've always done a really good job with having the, the battery charged. And we, that's something we will only get here in the future. Uh, we, you know, we, have the, we have the room for it, and that's one of the reasons they installed it where they did, because we have room, we could potentially put another one down here and another one up there, which is just one of the things we talked about. So here in the future, that's definitely an upgrade we want to do, of um, potentially upgrading the, the solar from a five to a seven, and also potentially putting two more backup batteries here as well. Being on Hi. Hi. Uh, can you tell me about why you decided to go solar? Yeah, in the very back. <laughs> yeah, so we've had our our first electric vehicle for over five and a half years now. Uh, we always thought it would be so great to be able to charge it on solar power, run it on sunshine, essentially. Um, it's technology we've been interested in since we met 10 plus, no, 15 plus years ago. Um, and so we've always kept an eye on that technology. We actually had looked into putting it on our, our previous home in Phoenix, um, but ended up finding other opportunities in California. So we didn't pursue that, didn't finish that out and moved out here. Um, but it was something that we knew as soon as we had bought a home out here, we were gonna start looking into it. And um, yeah, when it seemed feasible, um, a lot of the uh, incentives were still in place uh, two and a half years ago when we did it. And it just seemed great. So we just started talking about it. Was this the right time? Um, we you know, had the two electric cars at the time, and yeah, we just loved the idea of just continuing to um, green our energy use and, and our fuel use. Yeah, I think that's something for, my, for Stephanie and I that we, we really have always thought from really young ages, and that's something that you know, kind of brought us together a little bit as well. We've always tried to make things more efficient. How can we make these more green? How can we help the environment? And solar has really been on the front of our mind for a while. And yeah, the idea of driving on sunshine, plugging our cars in, um, is just an amazing thought. And once we got it on the house, it was, um, it was great. I, I would highly recommend it for anyone going into solar. And it's, um, it, it's also nice for, for um, like peak times, like here in California, and we had the five to eight peak times having solar that's still producing or still filling the battery and pulling from that. So it's not not just the environmental impacts, but some some of the monetary impacts as well for um, not pulling those peak times. Yeah, definitely. When the uh, battery technology came out, then 
um, you know, you could store some of your energy that you were producing and then use it during those peak times. We're like, this really seems like it's going to make sense financially. And so we did the math. We love math, did lots of math and figured out that that was the case, that we would be able to save money in the long run. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Richard and Stephanie. That was fantastic. I loved your uh, home store and I love seeing your kids. Um, so next up is Katrina Sutton. She lives in West Sac and has been involved with Cool Davis for her love of electric vehicles. Her video highlights her EV, PV, and battery life. And here's a quote from her. I love my battery and solar system. I feel so great looking at my solar panels and knowing they're happily producing power for me and the grid overall. With the battery, I feel like I'm helping peak shave and not just save money, but also help not overload the system. I grew up with a solar and battery grid integrated system on my childhood home in the late 90s, and I've always wanted to install my own system on my home as soon as I could. I currently work at CalStart as the bus team to help transit agencies prepare for 100% electric bus deployment. So let's see about her system. Hi, I'm Katrina Sutton. We're in West Sac, um, and this is the part of the National Solar Tour of 2020. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about my car and my solar. Uh, so I have a Chevy Volt, um, and it lives right here in my garage. Um, and I can also charge it with the solar. Um, I have a level. I have a level two set up here. Um, garage is a mess, but um, I have a. NEMA 1450 outlet that the solar guys installed when I got the system set up and I just have my little uh, plug here and it plugs into my charger or my yeah into the charging station and then it just snakes right into the car um, and I was really excited to get the solar because then I was able to um, get better wiring so I was even able to charge into the house or charge the car um, and with the solar, I got a, um, I've actually got an in-phase battery. So I do have a, um, a battery that can help with peak shaving. So it doesn't take me off the grid, but it does help during the peak times between um, four and nine for PG&E. So I can um, offset my power usage a little bit so it can reduce my bill. And it just makes me feel better that I'm using the solar that's literally on my roof. Uh, of course, with the solar, you also have the other equipment with it. I guess this is the part of the inverter infrastructure. And then I also got a um, sub panel as well. I think that one is so I can get more um, electricity out here for the car for um, safety reasons. The, uh, this is the app that I put on my phone to look at my battery and my system in general. And so you can see that right now I'm producing 1.3 kilowatts. And today I had a peak of up to 1.4. So not that much considering it's about a three kilowatt system, but it'd be like that. <laughs> um, it's just like that with the weather. And I guess it's a weak view of the like ratio between what I'm putting out into and then what I'm taking in. Um, and so it's just kind of a visual representation. Does this mean generally that you're putting into the system? Yeah. So generally this is showing that I put into the system. I think that was it. There's 10 panels on the roof. Um, I uh, had a really great time. I'm really excited that I have solar and I'm really glad I have the car. Uh, and together it's just really great. Uh, Did you buy this car um, you, new or used? So this is a used 2011. Um, it's number 176. So it's very old, old for electric vehicles. Uh, I got it used from my dad. So it is used, but it's been in the family since we first got it. Um, it has 133,000 miles on it. Most of those are electric, but um, the engine definitely comes in handy when I want to go visit my grandparents in Fresno or, uh, you know, go wherever else I need to go. The majority of the time it is on electricity. So um, that's why I like it. I like having the battery and uh, it's a great time. It's a fun ride. Nice sound system, so I'm blasting music on my drive down. <laughs> uh, I like having the electric vehicle because it's a really fun drive. It has saved me a lot of money, but also I just feel really good driving. Okay, so that was all of our homeowners show and tell. Thank you so much to all the homeowners. Next is going to be our Q&A session. 
you should see the Q&A button down below. And so you can please write your questions if you have any, and you can uh, address them to specific panelists or to a specific homeowner. You'll be able to see the questions that other people have already asked. So please upvote if you see one that you like. And that will allow us to respond to the questions that have the most interest first. Again, we have Mohammed uh, for all your technolo technology and in-phase questions. We have Brust, Katrina, and Richard on the line if you have specific questions about their systems. And additionally, if you have questions about installation, how long it takes to install, uh, the timeline, permitting, or sizing, we have three members of our solar task force and that are our local contractors. We have great appreciation for their voluntary participation in our solar task force. These three contractors carry a breadth of knowledge and experience and have helped Cool Davis focus our solar outreach in a most effective manner. The solar task force contractor team includes Aaron Nitzkin from Citadel Roofing and Solar, John Gemma from Aztec Solar, and John Walter from Repower Solar. Thank you all for joining us. I'm looking, I'm going to ask the panelists to please share their videos and uh, go ahead and unmute yourself so we can make sure everybody can be seen and heard. And again, here's the list of panelists. So if you have any questions for anyone specific, um, and then I will go ahead and stop sharing so we can all look at each other. All right, I've not been able to monitor the Q&A, so I'm gonna rely on my Cool Davis staff to come up with some questions. I see there's a, quite a few in the chat about chemistry. I see a few about what in the world are the incentives and rebates. Aha, uh -huh. so I see quite a few um, about cost, purchase, installation, and maintenance. Leslie, do you want to take what you what question you might think we should uh, uh, take a stab at first? Sure. So there was a question about um, tax credits in the question and answer, and I think that that um, if there are more questions, but I think I answered that one um, very succinctly there. Um, Lawrence had some tech questions that I think got answered for Lawrence. On the, Leslie, on the uh, available incentives, I wanted to add to uh, to what you, you wrote down as ITC is additional uh, incentives that are available in California, solar generation, uh, self-generation incentive program that is available for battery storage system. And that's a program that is run by CPUC and uh, utilities basically have budget allocated for battery storage. There are multiple levels for that. There is a program that is just as cheap, small residential. There is another one which is equity and equity resiliency. And they basically have some requirements in uh, either being in the fire zone or having PSPS event and some you know income requirements. So those are the items that I think there is a lot of good information on the web by just Googling SGIP. It's, it's too much of information for me to really share here, but I want to actually at least point to the right direction of uh, more information on SGIP would be super helpful as well. Okay, great. Um, so I would like to invite our three um, solar contractors to um, maybe split our remaining time, maybe about three minutes each to answer Mark's question that is in the Q&A right now, which is basically costs, purchase, installation, maintenance, how long it takes to recover those costs with savings. So John, do you want to start? John Gemma? Sure, thank you. Um, so costs can range anywhere from 13,000 to 16,000 installed. It all depends on how the installation is and that's for one battery. So again, it depends on different uh, technologies of the brands that are out there and how much power that they can offset. Um, but when you're, you're looking at two different things here, one is your savings that your, your key 
putting in the battery for yourself. So it's self-consumption that you can unload the battery during peak hours to be able to um, lower what you're going to be paying for peak hours, and then the rest would go back to PG&E. Okay, John, uh, sorry, your, your uh, audio is not fabulous. I'm not sure what the solution is. Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, the, the, the main part of it is something that is not necessarily saving if what you're invested in during an outage that you still have the ability to use power. So there's there's two parts to this. Uh, one, when power does go out, which we're seeing power outages more and more every year, uh, the ability to, the, the whole reason why you're trying to go with energy, energy independence is to uh, have the ability to use it. So right now, if you do solar only, and the power goes out in the utility, uh, you're not able to use that solar system due to safety issues. Uh, if you add in a battery, uh, you are able to use technology to transfer and what's called island the energy uh, to be able to use without it backfeeding to the grid. Fabulous. Thank you, John. Um, um, I'd like to bring in Aaron now, Aaron Nitzkin. Um, if you could give us a three minute answer to Mark's question, that would be great. Thank you, John. Welcome. Sure, thank you. Um, just following up on John's comments, um, a couple things that are really important is we've, that we've talked about is there's two main functions of a battery system. You uh, backup power and self-consumption you know, uh, utilizing that power during peak loads. And what one of the things that the, the variables that it's important to look into as you're different, you're choosing what solution you, you go with is the software interface and the ease at which a consumer has the ability to, to, to pivot and shift from, oh, I, you know what? There's gonna be a power outage coming up or maybe for the next few weeks, there, you know, there could be some power outages. I'm gonna go into full backup mode only. And, and there are some battery solutions where uh, the consumer does not have the ability to make those changes on their own. And they have to call their contractor and the contractor has to do that remotely. So it's a really important thing to do. Enphase has a really good solution along those lines. Power, um, Tessa also does. And my other comment, just to give you a sense of, uh, with regards to the rebates uh, for batteries that are available today, to give you a sense, if you're getting putting in one, uh, 13 and a half kilowatt hour uh, kilowatt battery you're looking at a, around maybe twenty three hundred dollar rebate back from the state through the estuary program if you're looking at about 26 kilowatt hours you're looking at around forty six hundred dollars about double that if you're looking at three uh it actually uh jumps up to over ten thousand dollars so it really varies based on which program you're going after and but today there are plenty of funds available so uh, you know, it's worth investigating further. Great, thank you, Aaron. So um, our homeowners are here and it'd be great to, is there anybody of our homeowners that want to feel a burning need to add something to their videos or? Um, I think Brest, Brest wanted to chime in. Brest, can you want to unmute yourself? And he had, yeah, he had um, some really good uh, payback crunching numbers, so I'm super, I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm, they I'm were impressive of, numbers, yes. Yeah, I'm a number nerd, so pardon pardon me on that front. The I, I would be careful if you're considering it. The the California rebate, I believe that uh, Aaron's referring to is this SGIP program. Would that be correct? Okay, well, and this is just me, and I got the Tesla one, which is sold more than most of them. Um, so I'll get back to that in a second. I haven't seen peep from that in two years. So I'd be really careful about doing your calculations based on the SGIP. That being said, um, the SGIP is a storage generation incentive program that the state puts on. And the idea is that they, they're trying to incentivize uh, battery backup systems that we're talking about tonight. Um, uh, but also what they're doing is, is sort of similar to what they do with electric car uh, 
um, rebates is that once you've hit a certain number, the rebate either tapers down or completely goes away. And so I do have the Tesla one and I didn't know about the other ones when I was buying it. Um, the Tesla one, I believe has almost used up most of its rebate by this time. You put into a queue um, and then sort of left out there. So not to say that the, that it, the thing doesn't exist because I'm sure some people have got, that there are a number of people who have gotten it. I'm not one of them. Um, so I definitely look into that with especially the independent contractors whom I would probably consider stronger next time because even if they used something like a solar battery from uh, Tesla, um, it doesn't count against the Tesla um, number, if I'm correct here, and the professionals can, can clarify, it only counts against that installer's numbers. So if you wanna look at the SGIP, I, I definitely take a look at the website on California's, uh, the government pages, and then definitely uh, get a really straight scoop from your contractor to make sure that they're that uh, you know exactly where they are in the uh, in the rebate program. John and Aaron, do you want to? Sure. Yeah, that's correct, Bruce. Um, they have a current wait, currently there's a wait list on the regular standard residential rebate. There are still funds available. It just hasn't been funded. It goes in phases. Uh, so there's still about in PG e 25 million left in the small residential budget. Uh, currently right now, which is a popular program, the resiliency equity part where there, you were in a fire zone, if you have medical rate, uh, multiple shutdowns uh, due to required from pg e uh, shutdowns due to weather. Um, unfortunately, those funds are oversubscribed, so they're not available right now uh, in pg &E. So the only one left is the small residential budget. There is money in there and it will be funded at some point. Uh, but right now, if you sign up, uh, you'll be put on a wait list and it's uh, in queue first come first. Great, thanks, John. Um, okay, anyone else of our panelists or experts that want to speak up? I was just going to say, I'm from what Russ was saying about asking questions from your um, the person who's installing everything. I mentioned my video how we went for the four different companies and kind of asked some questions like, what are you doing? How are you installing? What products are you using? How are you doing your rebates? What do you have left? Like, if you can, go to more than just one company, go to multiple companies and compete them against each other if you, if you have to and, and say, hey, this company offered me this. Can you do something better? Um, reason why we went with our company is because we like the fact that they kind of had everything together, the LG panels and the LG battery together, as opposed to, I think Muhammad kind of brought this up where some companies will have um, multiple different kinds of systems, one set of panels, one battery, one inverter, everything separate, um, which kind of makes it hassle if something fails. Like if uh, I'm an engineer by trade, and if something fails somewhere and you don't know where it fails, you might end up being calling all three companies to try to figure out what's going on, which is not something you want to have to, um, have to go through. Um, I think also asking about the products you're using. So I know it got brought up about like charge cycles and things like that. I know with LG, this is something I wish I would have realized initially, they offer the 10 year warranty on it, but they only offer 2,200 charge cycles. And if you do the math for 2,200 charge cycles, that's actually six years. So the warranty is not really 10 years, it's actually really six years if you're filling it every day, which you're likely to do. So the 10 years warranty is kind of a, a not, I, won't, I won't say scam, but it's not really a 10-year warranty because you probably are going to fill the battery up every day. Um, I think also ask what the max output is on the battery as well. That's something we didn't realize initially. It's like our max output in our battery is five kilowatts. Um, we have a big two-story house. And so when our air conditioning turns on, it's typically drawing like around that five kilowatt system. So it would drain our battery. It, it's not just draining the battery because the battery is uh, limited to five kilowatts, but then it's also pulling for the grid at the same time that it's draining the battery. Um, I would also, great. if it turned on during peak times, for instance, like my air conditioner had to turn on, which it does at this time of the year, that the battery potentially just charge at a higher rate. I don't know if that's possible for, for other companies, not um, future experts. Thank you, Richard. Yes. Looks like you paused a little bit. Thank you, Richard. Okay, last chance. One minute. Anybody else want, anybody else of our homeowners or our experts want to speak up? One minute. 
30 seconds. I just want to say like, it's really awesome. And I really appreciate that. You know, it's not just me who has solar and the car and the battery, like all together, like Richard, you guys have like three cars. Like my dude, that's so cool. Like Stephanie, like you guys are like living the life here, like goals. Um, and so I just want to say like, it's really, it's really exciting to hear that it's not just me and that we're hopefully encouraging other people to, um, you know, figure out that, hey, this works for people. It's not just, you know, random people on a Zoom call. It's your neighbor. It's your, I don't know, your coworker. You know, it's, you know, it is, it's everybody. Like we can theoretically, like most people can get to what we're doing. And it's just really uh, heartening, I guess, to hear like everybody's stories. Yeah, we actually sold our last gasoline car over two years ago. So we've been all electric for uh, for a couple of years now. And we, Yay. yeah, yeah we, uh, we, pretty, we pretty regularly take um, three to 5,000 mile road trips with our kids around the country. Ooh, nice. My I'm wife's on one right now. Yeah, like, yes, yes, Stephanie, <laughs> chime in. She's mom. in her car. It looks like the X, right? What are you in? <laughs> uh, this is the Model X, the Tesla Model yeah. X. I'm mm -hmm. charging right now. You can see my. I'm trying to. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, All right, Chrissy, back to you. Okay, great. Well, that was fantastic. The storytelling is really what cinch cinches it. Um, again, back to our, um, uh, uh, let me just get back to my last slide which is please uh, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for all of our participants. Uh, tomorrow is an EV webinar. It's called Breathe Free with EV. And so you, please sign up if you wanna learn more about electric vehicles. Um, and please take our survey again, the link is in our chat. So thank you all and uh, go have fun recapping.